Hi, this is Steph with Belladonna Dyes, and today we're going to make a Halloween inspired spiral. I have this shirt turned inside out from the pre wash. It's just a habit. I wash everything inside out, and then I smooth out as many wrinkles as I can, and then I decide where I want the center of my spiral to be, and I give it a little pinch. And using a hemostat and the microwave splatter guard, I create my spiral. So click your hemostat down on the first click. It does not need to be overly tight. Give it three, four twists. And then with the opposite hand, pull the fabric out and around and create your spiral. You don't want to put a lot of tension on the hemostat because you do run the risk of tearing a hole in your shirt and go around and around using the splatter guard until you just can't go any farther. Unclick the hemostat, and while holding down the center of the spiral, gently wiggle out the hemostat. I think this shirt is a 3XL, so it's a rather large shirt. So I'm going to secure it by using my stretched out favorite rubber bands. And how they became stretched out was I apply heat by using an electric blanket during the batching. And these rubber bands don't snap back into their original size. So I just set them in their own little separate container and I use them for larger projects. And they work great. So I like to create a nice tight spiral. So I'm going to pull on the loose tails, tucking them into the nearest rubber band. That way, when I need to pick up the spiral, flip it over, move it around, it's not going to fall apart. I've been trying out some different brands of shirts. I just am not a huge fan of the Gildan shirts. However, they do take the dye really well. So I got this shirt at JiffyShirts.com and it's a Port & Company brand. It's a V-neck ladies cut and it's their core cotton. So it's very similar to the Gildan shirts, but I feel like it's a little bit softer. And I also feel like this particular brand is more true to size. Gildan shirts to me seem like they're always one size too small. Have you guys noticed that? Next I need to build myself some type of an ice barrier and for this one I'm using the silicone cake molds. You guys see me use them all the time. I just love these things. I got them from Amazon and I do have links for them down below in the description box along with everything else that I use for tie-dye. So go ahead and check that out. Now they're just a little bit too big for the project, so all I do is I just simply secure it with a paper clip. Now it's time for the fun part. We get to add the dye. And like I said, I wanted this to be a Halloween inspired shirt, so fall colors. And when I think of Halloween colors, I always think of orange, green, purple, and black usually. So these are the colors from the last dye giveaway. So this first one is Ogre Achiever and it's from 2011 and it's a muck dye. So many and most don't have this color. So I was thinking a good dupe for this color could be moss green, muir green, or olive drab. I think any one of those, if you have it, would be very similar. Now, obviously, it's not going to be exactly the same, but in my opinion, those would be the closest. And Crystal, if you know a better color, please let us know in the comment section. Professor Plum is also from 2011, and it was a muck dye, so it's not available. So thinking of the colors that are currently available on Dharma's regular dye list, I think Plum, Imperial Purple, or Power Berry would all make a nice substitute for this color. 
And when I'm adding my dye, I'm leaving just a little bit of white space in between each color, just so the dye can breathe a little bit and stretch out. And if there are some color splits, we might have a chance to see them. With orange marmalade, things are just a little bit different. So this particular container is from 2012. But the difference is, you can still get orange marmalade. You just have to order it at five pounds at a time from Dharma's special order dye list. So that's a lot of dye. So where I get my special order dyes is from Tie Dye Supplies Marketplace, and I do have a link down below in the description box to take you right to that group. I recommend that you go and follow that group because if you wanna get special order dyes in smaller quantities than less than five pounds, there are a lot of wonderful people in there that are selling two ounces, four ounces, and whatnot. I typically buy my dye from Kathy Sprague, but I think you're gonna have good luck with just about anybody that's in there selling it. Oops, I dropped some orange marmalade on my Ogre Achiever. Now, if it was just a tiny little amount, no big deal, I would leave it, but that was a pretty substantial oops, right? So I'm just going to scrape that part off and then go in and touch it up. Next, I give my project a quick little sprinkle of soda ash for good measure, and I add my ice. And this is my Pribcho ice. It's freezer burned, that's why it kind of looks like snow or shaved ice. And it's recommended that you let your project batch at 70 degrees or higher for at least 24 hours after the ice melts. And this particular project batched for the full 48 hours. For the rinse out, you want to start by using cold water. That's going to rinse away any soda ash that might still be reacting within the fabric. And then increase your water up too hot and rinse until the water runs pretty much clear. From here, I take it to the washing machine and I like to do hot water cycles using Kirillon. That's a professional textile detergent that I get from Dharma Trading Company. And then I like to do a final hot water cycle using Millsoft. And Millsoft is a professional fabric softener that I also get from Dharma. And you will find the links down below in the description box. And then I put it in the dryer and I'll iron it and we'll come back and we'll see the results. Well, here it is guys. Here's our Halloween inspired spiral after it's been washed and dried. And I love this shirt. These are colors that I would never normally put together but they just work, especially keeping in mind that it's for Halloween. So the colors are really beautiful. It's my first time using the Ogre Achiever and Professor Plum. I have used the orange marmalade before on a dress that I made, and it, they're all really pretty colors. Um, the orange marmalade mixing with the Ogre Achiever in some spots made this really bright electric neon green, like look right here. I just love that. It is so vibrant and I think it's just beautiful. And you know, there is a little bit of brown tones, but I think that's just the way the Ogre Achiever splits naturally. I think it has a brown earthy undertone to it. So I think the shirt is a lot of fun. If it was in my size, I would totally wear it. And you know, it just has a nice fall, dark, earthy Halloween, feel to it. So overall, I'm super pleased. What do you guys think? Please leave me some comments down below. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to my channel, leave a thumbs up and click the bell and set it to all. That way you get notified of future uploads. And remember, have fun tie dyeing.